Here are a few pointers on adding and subtracting fractions. Now, if I take this fraction, one third plus one half, I can't add it up because I don't have common denominators. So the first thing is you need common denominators. So what I can do is I can multiply these two numbers by that denominator and these two numbers by the other denominator so that I have 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus, let's see, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So now I can add these up. I have 2 6 and another 3 6 gives me 5 6. Um, somebody asked me why do you need that like it doesn't make sense why I can't just add them up and I guess you don't need them but that's the way the math is going to work out here's one third see one part out of three this whole distance represents one if I add a half to it so here's half of one if I add another half to it the way the math is going to work out is that together those will be the same distance as one two three four five sixths of one so it's just the way the math works out if I can kinda of lay these on top of each other one third plus one half is the same distance as five six it's equal so common denominators is the first thing second you can always I should say you can always use improper fractions meaning a fraction where the the numerator the top number is greater than the bottom number so like five thirds is an improper fraction or um, sixteen fourths or something. That's an improper fraction. I can always use those and then convert back to a, a mixed number. So let's say I have four and one third and I'm subtracting, I'm just gonna make the denominators the same to, to save us time here. Subtracting uh, three and two thirds. One way that I can solve this is to make both of these numbers improper fractions. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So this 4 and 1 third becomes 13 thirds. Minus 3 times 3 is 9, 9 plus 2 is 11, so this 3 and 2 thirds becomes 11 thirds. I have 13 thirds, I take away 11 thirds, I'm left with 2 thirds. So that one worked out pretty well. The reason this works, um, or the reason this is important to know, is because um, these improper fractions can help you solve an answer, or solve a problem, where the answer will be negative. Like let's say I had um, 2 and, I don't know, 2 and 5 sixths minus 4 and 1 six this number is greater than that number. It means I'm going to have a negative. So if I convert these to improper fractions, then I'll be able to subtract and I'll know how how negative my answer is, how far to the left on a number line I go. So 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5 is 17, so that becomes 17 sixths. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25, so I get 25 sixths. So 17 sixths minus 25 sixths equals a negative 8 sixths. Now I can take that negative 8 sixths and convert it to a mixed number because it's an improper fraction. 6 goes into 8 one time and I'm left with a remainder of 2 sixths. So negative 1 and 2 6, that actually simplifies to negative 1 and 1 third.
because I can divide the 2 and the 6. Divide them both by 2, so 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you can always use improper fractions to solve these.